What's up everybody? Hope everything's going well. Wanted to make this quick video to go over something that happened to me recently while selling on eBay. Uh, I've actually been meaning to make this video for a little bit, but just been caught up, haven't had a chance. And of course I'm choosing to make it now while I have my Roomba robot going on, but that's okay. So I uh, want to just show this. I blocked out obviously all the specific information about the order for obvious reasons, item and, and everything else. Uh, but basically what occurred here uh, in so many words, and you can go ahead and, and read this if you want, but an item I shipped out <clears throat> to a customer didn't arrive and the tracking number went cold for over a week. And then they filed an item not received case for it, rightfully so. I then <clears throat> investigated what happened to it. This specific item, I sourced it from Amazon. So it was, you know, an item that was being delivered. Now, actually, it was Amazon Logistics who was delivering the item. So the, the item literally disappeared as that happens every once in a blue moon. Um, an item will just disappear and, and you know the tracking information goes cold at some update along the way, but it's never delivered. Um, it wasn't even a case of an item, you know, being, uh, you know, Amazon saying it was delivered or the supplier saying it was delivered, it just didn't show up anywhere past a certain update. So the buyer reported this. I then investigated, saw it, called in, spoke with Amazon. Amazon saw it, you know, everybody was on the same page. They then sent out a replacement, which that's the standard. So, you know, at then at that point, as you can see in the message change uh, here, I then relayed this information to the customer, which is what you're supposed to do. Basically, I'm, I'm being a mirror between the customer and uh, the supplier, in this case, Amazon, relaying the information as far as, hey, the package wasn't received, and then telling the customer that the replacement was shipped out. At this point, I'm not at any loss. I paid for the original, obviously, but then I had having a replacement shipped out by Amazon to cover the replaced item. <clears throat> and this is really the... What I'm going to say next is a point of to why I'm making this video because everything I'm saying up until this point is is like you know pretty standard stuff. I don't think it needs explaining uh, as far as if an item gets lost, you call it in and you know request a replacement. Um, but I had something very interesting happen and, and actually was you know not happy with the result of it. But at any rate, um, Amazon and any retailer, I mean me as an uh, e-com uh, retailer myself, a, a, a seller of products online, physical products, if I ship out an item <clears throat> to a customer and it gets lost in transit, which again, once in a blue moon, it happens, okay, depending on the item, maybe you have shipping insurance, maybe you don't, whatever your situation is, you ship out an item, it gets lost in the mail, okay, if it gets lost, and that's it, it gets lost, and X amount of time goes by, you try to track it down, whatever the case is, again, not specifying on the item or the value of it, whatever, but generally speaking, the, the kind of standard, I feel like, protocol and courtesy in the e-commerce world has always been, if an item gets shipped out, if it disappears off the face of the earth, that's it, the customer didn't receive it, and they start saying they didn't receive it, you try to work with them, whatever, the item wasn't received, it gets to a point basically that you have two options and again this is how i operate this is how as far as i've known up until very recently um how big companies work when it gets to a certain point of the item hasn't been found hasn't been received but literally the track information is is again just a cold uh, a cold um trail or whatever um you have two options either you refund the buyer or you say i'm gonna ship you out a replacement depending on what it is, depending on the scenario, whatever. So that's always been the case. Amazon also always being the case. You ship out a replacement. Let's say the customer doesn't want a refund. They go with a replacement. So, okay, send me out a replacement item if you're able to send out that item, whatever it is. Um, or again, with a big company, standard protocol. Yes, we'll send you our replacement, just like Amazon did in this scenario. Send out the replacement. Then the item shows up the the replacement item shows up and then within a day or two or whatever order it is basically the replacement item gets shipped out and then on or before or after the time that the replacement shows up then the original pops up and also gets delivered and it happens and if you're watching this video i'm sure you, you this probably happened to you if you buy things even if you buy things on the internet as a consumer i'm sure this might have happened to you that you order something gets lost you report it they ship out a replacement and then the original pops up maybe it pops up the same day or two weeks later or whatever it shows up i've never experienced and i as a seller if that was, you know, it, like if this customer would have, like if it was an item I had in inventory and the customer requested a replacement, 
I would have shipped it out. It just happened to be a dropship order. I would have shipped it out from my inventory, the replacement order, and just taken the loss and, you know, written it off as a loss of the original, you know, the sale turned into a loss, basically. Um, but let's say then I see at a later date that the original popped up in the mail. It's kind of poor taste for me. And again, I'm a peon uh, as far as a seller goes in the world of e-commerce. I'm, I'm, you know, not a multi-billion or even multi-million dollar operation being honest here um by any means it, you know what who, who the hell would i be to ask the customer tell the customer not even ask excuse me because i wasn't asked tell the customer you got to ship back you know oh uh, yeah i saw you received that item uh you got to send me back the replacement or the original and if you don't send it back to me by this date i'm gonna charge you a second time for that i've never heard of that it's like it, it's as i said it's like if there's any type of standard protocol or, or um i guess common courtesy in the world of e-commerce there's like certain acts of engagement if you will and like how you know customers and and brands and businesses online have transacted since you know the internet um really has 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 taken off in, in the world of e-commerce uh, for the last 20 plus years, I'll say or more. And I've never heard of this, but just this past week, what happened to me, so you saw how this worked out here, right? This worked out February 22nd. I didn't think anything more of it. When I requested this replacement to be shipped out from Amazon, I specifically asked, will this item, let's say as an example, if this item shows up, the, the or original shows up after replacement shipped out, Will I be charged? Because I always ask questions like that, you know? And I already knew what the answer was because I've dealt with this many times already before, even personally for items that I'm not, you know, selling, just buying um, from anywhere, not just Amazon. Um, I was told, no, you're not going to be charged if the item shows up, you're not going to be charged. Okay, fine. All this happened, the replacement ended up getting delivered, and then I, I was keeping track of it and I noticed that the original also had delivered too and that was it. Okay, so then I saw in the return, it, they had it as a return the way that they opened it. It basically said that I had to ship back the replacement by such a date, but I was already assured that if I didn't do that, I wasn't going to be charged because of the scenario the item was shipped out. It hadn't yet arrived. There wasn't like a return being open for a broken item where you have to ship back the original. It just never arrived. So again, it was like standard protocol. I confirmed it, but I wasn't even needing a confirmation. And they confirmed what uh, you know I, I already knew. But with that being said, what then occurred was the date passed of whatever it was where the original needed to be sent back. And what do you think happened? I was then charged back for the item. So you know I took the loss. I called and I spoke to the representative. Long story short, they told me there's nothing they can do. And it made me realize that, you know, apparently there's policy changes. I'm not going to just single out Amazon, um, but I mean, perhaps in the greater e-commerce world, there is, you know, perhaps some policy shift going on that may have to do with people abusing. I mean, yes, there are people out there that are outright scammers and thieves that they'll order an item, it gets delivered and they say they didn't receive it. And they do that like all the time or, you know, at least enough that it puts a dent in, in business and then you have many many people doing that i understand all of that but it's just it's frustrating because it seems like policy changes are taking place especially in larger retailers where basically you know if even if i mean the customer isn't always right i i don't believe that customer is usually right but not always right because there are some people that are trying to take advantage but i feel like those those are that's a small percentage really and um you know, basically what it made me realize in this scenario is that if you're, it, it has to be treated differently in the sense that now if this, ha okay, what's the solution to all this? The purpose I'm even making in all this video is to inform of what I'm noticing as policy changes. And I've dealt with this in this specific case. And I'm just talking about, you know, saying it's Amazon because it's this specific order, but I've dealt with some similar situations prior to this. This was kind of like, just like the final thing. And it took me for the most shock because Amazon is like, known for like the customer service it's like like you know you 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 even sound like they're you're upset like too upset and they're like hey you know would would giving you a 10 or 15 dollar amazon gift card like cheer you up you sound like you're really upset oh yes it would actually thank you like 
that's how they've always been. And so this, this like completely shocked me. I mean, it happened, you know, from another, you know, smaller retailer again, I don't want to keep naming names. It's not the purpose of this. Um, but I was, I, I was like, okay, fine, whatever. I could see, I could see a smaller company doing it, even if it's, you know, I mean, Amazon's the biggest company in the world, but you know what I mean? I, I was, when, they, when I got this response and this experience from Amazon, it was shocking because it was like, if Amazon is doing it, trillion or multi-trillion dollar at this point, Amazon, the undisputed king of e-commerce, the basically half of the, in, the e-commerce money that's spent on the internet basically passes through Amazon, essentially. Um, if they are saying this and they're making these policy changes, we're saying, no, if the replacement showed up, now you gotta ship it back or we're charging you back. And they did, and they stuck with it, and that's that. Uh, it was a small ticket item, but the point is, this has to be approached differently if you're gonna be a small uh, time seller, you are a small time seller, you know, anyways. Um, so in a drop shipping fashion, I mean, if it's if if it's an inventoried item, you know, again, that, that's the thing that, that really kind of pisses me off about all this, because if, if this was an inventoried item that I had in my inventory, not a drop shipped item that it just so happened to be for this example, I would have shipped out the replacement. That's what, if, if they would have requested that, I would have, ask them a replacement or a refund if they said replacement i had one i would have shipped it out to them and that's it i took the loss what am i going to do but then i wouldn't have you know told them if i saw the original excuse me keeping track of it saw that the original showed up i wouldn't then get a hold of them and say hey you need to send one of those back or i'm going to charge you for a second one like what in the world is that so basically as a small seller if you're going to be drop shipping uh, previously, the policy was for matters like this was essentially, as I said earlier in this video, I don't want to run it too long, so it's almost 12 minutes, but I'm going to wrap it up here. If you're going to make, um, I said in the, earlier in the video, you have to be a mirror in the sense that you have to be a mirror of what the customer wants to what Amazon or I'm saying Amazon this example, but the supplier wants if you're going to drop ship items, you have to be a mirror. The customer says, I want a return, uh, a, a return, yes. You gotta tell Amazon, okay, I want a return or a replacement sent out. If the customer says, I want a refund, you just tell the supplier, I want a refund. And that's it, you just are a mirror in the process. But with this and a couple other instances before this, but this being the final straw, in my opinion, that made me realize this, if you're gonna drop ship items, you now have to be a mirror to a certain point, but then you also have to be a filter and put a stop to the message and then take into account what's gonna be best for you, which it might put, you know, a little still, um, I guess you would say inconvenience in some ways, which I'll explain in a second again, not to make this run too long, but what do I mean by this? Moving forward, to, to get to the point, moving forward in this same scenario, if this happens again, and it will eventually, if this happens again, where the item gets lost, it's lost in transit, that's it, it's lost for a week or whatever. I think this case was like a week or over a week. What I'm gonna do and the customer gets a hold of me, I'm gonna ask the customer, like I always do. That That is gonna be the transparent part. Ask the customer, do you want a, a return or a refund? If the customer says a refund, then that's easy. Then I just tell the supplier, hey, refund me, that's it. However, if the customer says I want a replacement sent out, I'm still gonna tell the supplier give me a refund because apparently no longer is the standard protocol or the status quo or the common courtesy or whatever you want to call it of e-com apparently being honored the way it used to be and again maybe because of people gaming the system i can only imagine um it, it now has to be to the point where you say no i just want a refund refund me and then once you get refunded, you get the confirmation email, that's it, you know, it'll show up in a day or two, then put a replacement order, a new separate replacement order, which is still an inconvenience because now you're gonna be waiting in most cases that refund doesn't come normally instantaneously. I tried to snap my fingers, uh, got a blister actually. Um, uh, normally it's not instantaneous, but no, so you're still gonna be inconvenienced because you're gonna have to pay for a new item to get shipped out. You're probably gonna be charged, you know, most likely before the refund comes back because that's how most things are that you know the, the payments out go faster than the money coming back it seems like in a lot of cases um so still an inconvenience but yet 
in that case, in my opinion, you're basically secured that that's it. You got your refund, you chose refund on this order, you close this order out, and now if you're gonna place a replacement order, you place a replacement order, that's separate, and, and that's that. And then if the, the original order, which is now closed and refunded, if the item then shows up, then you cannot have a company saying, oh no, well now you gotta send it back, and if not, we're gonna charge you a second time. No, that's it, the item and the return, it, it, you know, that scenario is completely closed out, refunded. You know, at that point, it's closed. They can't, um, you know, go back and, and do that at that point. So um, I had to make this video again, um, just to go over this. Uh, to me, it was just really caught me uh, completely off guard. Um, and, um, you know, I just see that that's how it has to be moving forward, dealing with a specific scenario like this. You have to be a filter um, and also be transparent yet with obviously with the customer, always be transparent, but, you know, be a filter in the sense that also protecting yourself and um, can't just assume that the suppliers are going to do the right thing any longer. It seems like it seems like, you know, you just got to, you know, say, hey, no, 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 no matter what, I want my refund. And then from there, I'll place a replacement order, still deal with any inconvenience of kind of a delay between the money out and the money in. But, um, you know, better than the, a replacement uh, showing up and then the original, of course, showing up and then having, you know, one of these suppliers saying, well, no, now we're going to charge you double. And now you're you're in the red, you know, actually really in the red, not just uh, temporarily in the red while things are processing. So uh, with that, I want to uh, just make this video again. So uh, have a great selling week starting off the new month and uh, keep killing it. Have a great night.